everybody, I'm Suzanne, and today's video is actually one that I posted to my Patreon folks. And um, I have a, st a student, uh, Marty, and she was struggling with painting folds and fabric. So I'm going to show you the piece. This is this is it's just a, a big wad of fabric, but I wanted to talk about the folds in fabric. So I'm really blessed, and I know it's going to sound weird, but I'm blessed to have <laughs> what seems to be like an endless supply of blue rags because I have another student that um, is wonderful and always donates these blue rags for the studio. And since I mainly wipe my brushes as opposed to, you know, using a lot of like paint thinner, um, yeah, I have all these blue rags. And I thought, what better way to show just a really simplified version of painting fabric folds uh, than to use one of my blue rags. And so you can see somewhat of a resemblance here. And that's what today's video is all about. And I'm going to show you, this is a real time video, folks. This is from start to finish. There is no stopping and starting. It's the whole thing right away through. And it's about an hour long, but it's real time. So it's going to show you how, step by step, how I would paint um, fabric folds. So sit back, enjoy. Maybe you want to paint along. And we'll go ahead and jump into this video on painting folds and fabric. All right, folks, I have been encouraged <laughs> to show a video on how to paint folds and fabric. Now, I'm working with uh, one of my Patreon folks is Marty, and she's in Knoxville, Tennessee, and she is also one of my students that I teach via Zoom. Uh, and she's doing a beautiful portrait of her sweet little dog, Bailey, but we're having trouble communicating or I'm having trouble communicating how exactly to do fabric folds and I know there's a lot of videos out there but I wanted to try to simplify this and so I'm just I'm, I just took a picture of a rag I, I have I am lucky to have all these blue rags in my studio thanks to one of my other students uh, uh, Linda so what we're gonna do today is paint fabric folds. I don't have anything drawn on here. We're just winging it here. I've only put down a few colors. I've got titanium white, cobalt blue, um, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. That's it. And what I'm going to do is just do a really loose sketch of what I have here. Okay. So I'm going to take my uh, ivory pointed round. It's a rosemary number five pointed round. And I'm just going to take a little cobalt blue, and I'm using cobalt because it's my neutral blue. It's not cool, it's not warm, it's right in the middle, right? Even though it may not be the same color of the, as this, I am really wanting just to simplify, simplify this idea. So I'm just going to kind of suggest that there's a fabric here, and there's a little bend in the fabric, and this may not be exactly like um, the picture, but you're going to get a really good idea of what's happening here but just how I kind of draw this out um, um, so I'm just kind of doing a loose sketch here because really folds of fabric are um, just series of, of knowing where to put put the light in and um, and where not to <laughs> where to put the shadows in where to put the light in and I'm really not going to uh, copy this picture for you know exactly I'm just trying to give you an idea I need something to something to jump off of here um, and so we know that this fabric goes off the page and there's another fold here there's another fold here and like I said I'm winging it here folks I'm not really trying to do um, an exact drawing of what I have here okay so I have this kind of loose suggestion of what this pile of fabric looks like so what I'm going to suggest to make this easy I'm, I'm using a lot of paint thinner okay and I'm going to take cobalt or first you know what we're going to go ahead and do the dark values first and the best way to see dark values is to squint at your picture. And I am switching back to the pointed round. And I'm gonna take the ultramarine blue and mix a little ivory black in it. Because I went with ultramarine blue because it is my cooler, it is a cooler blue than cobalt. And I'm adding the ivory black. 
and again I am keeping it super super thin for demonstration purposes I just I don't really want to um, go that impasto here so I'm going in and just kind of suggesting where the dark values are so you're gonna have you're gonna have this too um, and I may actually move this out a little bit you know I'm just I'm just kind of playing here and I'm adding more paint thinner because I don't and this is moving because I don't have it taped down I'm just using this is just canvas paper and when you squint it's easier to see the dark values And I see it's really dark up in here. If I use a little bit more paint thinner, I can just kind of wipe, wipe it out a little bit. See, see how I got that? And that's not to say I won't come back in and work on some more dark values, but I'm just putting in what I think are where the dark values go. And you know, some of these might not be exactly where they need to be. Let's um, get a little bit more of this color. Again, I'm just using paint thinner. I'm just really wanting this to be an easy demo. I want to try to make this as easy as possible. Um, and then I'm going to use more paint thinner. And there's this. this fold here and so on and there's a little fold here actually this this fabric is going to come down here so we're going to move that out and this comes down and then it goes back in there Okay, so now I'm going to take just the ultramarine blue. And so where I have these darker places, these... Um, so I'm just kind of lightening it up. I could be using a different brush, but hey, if I don't have to mess this other one up, I guess I won't. So I'm always looking where the um, there's transitions. So you can use the side of your round brush like this. That's okay. And again, it really does help if your eyes are sort of closed. And we're going to come over here on this side of this folds of fabric. And so I kind of lost a lot of my distinctive um, dark value there, but we'll go ahead and put something back in there in a minute. So it's all playing within um, dark and light values. And sometimes when you're really working with paint that you're you know, you're wanting it to be a little bit more um, impasto. You, it does help to go thicker, go with the, the direction that the fabric is folding. So you can see how I'm kind of with rolling this edge. I think that the, 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 see how you can move your wrist in this direction of that fabric, right? And I'm just kind of going in here. And I'm, again, just kind of folding fabric, <laughs> creating a little fold. And I can see that I have to add some more dark values. And I am going almost with a wash here, folks. I'm not really, again, I just wanted to just kind of simplify the idea of how to do folds of fabric, okay? because I, I, I saw that there was probably a need. And um, 
I just wanted to get this in for you. Now, I want to tell you something. Um, this Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, my son and I are going live. We're going to have, I'm going to do a live demo here in my studio. It's something I've been telling you I was going to do. I may have been meaning to do it for a long time, but I'm finally getting the equipment and the things that we need to do this sort of thing. And with the help of my son, who's like amazing, um, and I'm sure everybody's mother, everybody, everybody, every mother thinks their son is amazing, but mine really is. Anyhow, we're going to go live, so I want you to join me. I will be painting, I'll probably put about two hours into a little painting of a fox, of a fox pups. And you're going to see, you're going to be getting a link soon, probably tonight. So things are, things are starting to happen, folks. And I want to thank everybody who has stuck with me so far. Uh, I want you to know how much I appreciate you. I know this looks like just a big old blue pile of mess here. But what I'm going to do is now I've kind of got my shapes. And I've not gone in with any of my light colors. But I'm going to go in with a lot darker color. And I'm going to go a little thicker with my paint. And I'm using the pointed round. This seems to be the darkest part of the whole... Um, area here. Then it kind of switches to more of a blue. And we're going to... And one of the things that I was telling Marty is you want your darkest value closest to where the fold, the, the fabric folds in on it. Does that make sense? Probably not. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but, and you'll have this raw, you know, this photo reference. So if you want to play with this yourself, you can. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit this again. We've got a little, a little, little piece up here. And for your listening pleasure, we have Paco de Lucia on Pandora. I find it's nice music. I usually have this station playing when my students are here. I've got my uh, Tuesday night class, group class. So I am here for the duration. Okay. Just kind of emphasizing some of the dark values again. Again, this is another dark, dark, dark one. Also want to remind you guys, if anybody wants to head to Kingsport October 7th, 8th, and 9th, I will be having a three-day wildlife painting workshop. I'd love for you guys to come. You'll be here in Kingsport, Tennessee. We're going to be doing birds and botanicals, and it's going to be fun. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, I'm going back to the cobalt blue, and I did switch brushes. I'm going in with number six, Eclipse Long Filbert. I'm going to add, start adding some white now. Now the reason I'm going with cobalt it is, is, again, it's my neutral. And I'm going to start hitting some of the tops here. Whoops. Now this is where sometimes we do, uh, I'm going to blend a little bit here. So I want my darker, you know, I want it to be darker. Um, and I'm going to actually go like this in here. I'm hitting this again. So you almost have, you can see almost like there's different planes here in the fabric. And even on the inside of some of these rolls, it's a little bit lighter. And since I've got the cobalt with a little bit of titanium white, it's allowing me to make those dog barking. Now, I'm going to go in very light here. And some areas like this are really catching a lot of light. So 
you can see how I'm, I know the light is on the top of this. So if you're if you're watching a fabric, how it rolls, the light's going to catch the top of the the rolls of. can alter the size you know you can have this a little bit messy now I'm I am going in you know with kind of bigger brushes probably too big I'm gonna take um, this uh, pointed round kind of refine my actually put a little bit of light right on the inside of this fabric here because it might bulge a little bit. And you can probably lighten it up a little bit on the edges here. Because now if you're working into wet paint you can do this. So it's all about value, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more darker values inside of here. So I did go a little, a little light in here. the things that I've I don't mean to pick on my my student Marty only that I see her and I see her work but one of the strokes I want if you're um, you've been painting a while is this try not to do that so much um, I'd rather you just keep the brush on the on, on here and just keep moving it around but this business will get you a you know, there are times when you can use that stroke, but there's not, not that many times. <laughs> Trust me, there's just not. Okay, so you see I'm just kind of, I'm going back over some of the places, and I, I'm always, I'm always, I've always bling, you know, I've got, um, how do I say this? I always, always have my eyes squinty. So you look at where the darkest values are, and of course here it's really, you know, in the creases of a fold. Like here. And you take this fabric that's in here. I'm going to go in with ultramarine blue. I went with ultramarine blue because I know it's going to be cooler. And I'm going to always go back and lighten some areas up. I'm going to take my cobalt. that this is I'm gonna bring this out a little bit more see that's what I'm saying I don't, I'm not doing a like an actual serious sketch here I'm always wiping my uh, brush off So I have this fold here, but I still have this really dark crease. And it 
it's pretty dark right there. I'm going to switch over to a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit more impasto. I don't want this to be a long demonstration. I really just want to show you a little bit of how building up from the dark area to a lighter area when making a uh, making cloth. Again, I'm going to adding some white to this color here soon. Uh, folks, here in Kingsport, Tennessee, it's super, super hot. And I'm gonna take that. Phone calls, I'm trying not to. Or ultramarine blue because all the interior of this is actually pretty dark. I want to add a little bit of black to it just because it's a little too blue for me. So there's a And so like the fabric's gonna roll a little bit. See how I can roll that? There's not a lot of straight lines here. And I'm see how I'm full, pulling that into that roll. And there's another roll that kind of comes down closer. Yeah, I'm pulling it into that dark area, but not through it. I can, brushes go in different directions, folks. You see how I'm just kind of like windshield wipers, just kind of pulling that out like that. Now you can, you can make your folds a little um, irregular, you know? Like I said, I am not going to suggest, uh, you know, I'm doing this as a, as a demo. There's a lot more stuff and I've kind of lost some of this area in here, but it's okay. We'll make it up in another area. I'm going to roll that a little bit. See, I'm rolling it. There's another darker color. Going in with the ultramarine blue, ivory black mixture. It has a little bit of the white in it, but that's okay because it's. You can have minor folds in fabric too. See how I'm rolling that a little bit. And we're going to bring this down. Because we're going to bring this out here eventually. So remember, fabric will fall in front of each other and behind each other and, and come from all different directions. and. You want to try to make like a little hump to hump right there and just blend out the edges and see how I'm using the brush. I'm just kind of teasing that color right into that area. I over blended it a little bit. 
then clean your brush between colors so you don't muddy it up if you've got to put in some more darker value good by all means put it in and um So sometimes I'm just going to go ahead and grab a, there's a little bit of oil here, and I'm going to suggest that this fabric comes down here, this little, oh yeah, there's all kinds of, oh my goodness. So Singer and I went for our walk this afternoon and it was hot. I'm going to use my big fat flat brush here, going in with more white. Since we've already got wet paint down here, if I just go over here like this, it's, it's, okay. it's going to be okay. Just trying to create this. It's like it's a different value than this. It's a little bit darker, and that means I'll need to come back here and lighten this up. But this comes down here, doing what I usually tell people not to do. Don't use your fingers. Yeah, I just did that. So. Now right here, there's a really light, and it's, you know, where the light hits it, it's going to be concentrated more on the very top of that fold. Okay. So you get the feels here, guys. Like I said, this is like such a basic, um, I'm sure that there's so many other ones that you can look at that will take the time to do probably a better um, demonstration. Now, when you're rolling an edge like this, the white doesn't necessarily go right to the edge because the, roll, the fabric is folding under itself. So you're usually gonna put your lightest edge right before it rolls in. Unless your light happens to be coming from that other direction. In this case, it's it's, I'm gonna, I'm not getting a sharp enough point here. I'm going to put my light value here, but it tapers down in my picture. And so even on here, I'm gonna put a little bit of that light here, put a little light here as it rolls. So if I wanted to really go nuts here, I could I could do a lot of fun stuff here. But I'm gonna go ahead and roll that edge. So you kind of have that feeling that there's that light there. And I'm going to suggest that the light is a little stronger right here at the top of this little fold. Because this plane and this plane are virtually the same plane as this is. And so if the light is coming from the top, I actually just took this picture sitting on my little table. Um, and the light was actually coming from behind it. But that's how it was hitting on this. Pull that down, see how I'm rolling that. Now, if this was something like a fabric, like a taffeta or something that was really shiny, um, that might be really fun to do. But this is just an old blue rag. These are the paint rags that I have here in the studio that my student um, Linda brings me, and she is a calf nurse. So these are like surgical 
scrub towels. And again, this is, I'm gonna concentrate my light right on the top here, but as it goes into this space, it kind of disappears. It's still there, but it's, It's a little, it's teasing it a little bit here. If you need to use a little bit of oil, just go ahead and use a little bit of oil to help you blend where you need to blend. But remember, over blending is not advised here. Over blending is almost never advised. The only time that I liked, and I even even then you can over blend, it's when you're doing flesh tones, you know. I might use a lot of soft brushes or sables. Okay, are you starting to feel the fabric? Are you starting to feel it? Um, okay, so I'm gonna jump, oh, let's do this little weird little roll here. So where fabric rolls into itself here, I'm gonna go in there with that, this mixture. I'm gonna suggest that this is fabric underneath itself going to bring this over. So that's like it's, we're going to give it a little edge here. So we're going to go ahead and put some color in here. And then we can always lighten it back up. Okay. I'm taking the Ultramarine blue, titanium white, and I am going to come right here like that. And we're going to just that that goes up into there. That tells me it's three o'clock. Like I said, I am not putting a lot of time in on this, guys. I am just wanting to give you that demonstration because I know this is going to definitely help Marty with her piece. And I figured if, if Marty needed to look at this, so did a lot of other people. So that's why we're doing this today. And this is just for my Patreon folks. I may go ahead and put a little bit of light on this part, but as it goes back underneath here, it's going to be less light. So now we're going to go in light. Use a little bit of oil if you need to. So if I humped, oops, that got a little bit of the blue on there. I didn't want that. Go with cobalt and white. I tend to go with the direction that the fabric goes, okay? So I'm not doing it this way. I'm going with the way the fabric rolls. I think that's important. The direction of your stroke really does matter. Okay, I'm gonna go with my lightest light. Even have suggest a roll within a roll so like here if I want to just make the lightest value like this 
Now, sometimes I'll go off script here, folks, but I'm looking at an opportunity. So I can leave this darker value in the center, almost suggesting that it in itself is a little bit recessed. Okay, I'm not gonna be worried about texture and stuff here. Okay. You getting the feels? You getting the feels? Like here. And I'm going to suggest up here. Another place up here. Isn't this music pretty? No, I'm not going to do it just like this. I'm not going to try to. I just wanted this for demonstration. Now, if you guys have any questions about any of this that I'm doing today, give me a holler. And be sure to jump in on Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to send you the link for the live stream. And I'm just going to give it about two hours. I'm not really, I really want to just be able to give you guys more. Um, I've been saying that I was going to do live streams for a while. And now that we're getting the equipment in and everything's starting to fall into place, my son is helping me tremendously. Um we're doing we're going to be doing the live streams so do jump in because I want to know that you guys really want to see this kind of thing and we're going to paint I'm going to at least take you through the steps of how I start a piece how my brain works and um, I'm going to make one of these even though I can't really do it because I didn't give myself enough space but there's like little loop-de-loops I'll show you how we do a little loop-de-loop -loop. I'm going to go back with the middle tone that happens to be ultramarine blue titanium white and a little ivory black so right here I'm going to make a little fabric fold and loop it up into this like that Just put, putting in little, see if I can zoom in a little bit there for you. If I just, so this is actually going to be a lot lighter here, but we'll fix that in a minute. I can with a little bit go a little bit lighter even yet right here but not all the way where the uh, fold is it's knowing how to manipulate your values okay and understanding how light falls so if I kind of loop that out see how I'm rolling that edge I want to keep that smooth there There's a lot of stuff that I'm missing here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I am going to go back in, really emphasize the intensity or the darkness of this. my brush really well and go in with the cobalt titanium white and I'm going to pull this down come on Sue get it nope sometimes and the very top of this 
trying to let the, the brush do the work here. Somebody with a big golden doodle just went by. A big golden doodle that needs to be shaved down. I don't know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk about other people's dogs, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I brush my dog every day, okay, folks? Because if I didn't, he would be a big matted mess. And a, a, a standard poodle has naturally just curly hair. A doodle, especially like a golden doodle, has curly and straight hair that tends to mat worse than even a, a poodle's does. So unless you want your dog shaved, which I generally want my dog shaved, just because it's hot. Groom your dogs. All right, so we've, yeah, let me back back out now. And since we've got tops here with the lights hitting, there's gonna be more white up on the top of these. And this, this fold right here tends to be a little bit more forward. It's, it's a lot more lit up. It kind of tapers off down here. mid-tone, the light, just a tiny bit, because in here it kind of gets... <laughs> I think I feel like I'm channeling my inner uh, Georgia O'Keeffe here. I know what you're thinking. I was thinking the same thing. If you don't know what I'm thinking, but you understand George O'Keefe, you can probably gather what I'm feeling over here. Okay, so we're gonna go right here, a little bit lighter, right to here. All right, paying way too much emphasis on this one spot. Y'all feeling it? I may not get all up in here because it's just basically a lot of the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do this area, and folks, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take much much more of your time. Hopefully, you're getting an idea of how fabric rolls. It's all about manipulating your um, your light and dark values, really. Okay, so here's a little thing. I think I can do this better. So. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker tone because this doesn't just go white. It's There's a little bit of a, a medium tone right here. And that looks a little bit better. And then even here, that tone. Come on, so you got this. darker in here, right in here. Okay, now I have this area here. I'm going to go back in with this. There's definitely that, um, contrast here. All right, 
I want to show you how to roll fabric here when you're rolling into a dark edge. So like here we've got this extremely, extremely like dark, like black almost edge, okay? And I'm just going to emphasize it. So the light is going to roll into it. Let me see if I can zoom in just a tiny bit. We're just 44 minutes into this. Like I said, I'm not gonna. I just want to load this and get this up to you guys because I really want Marty to have it. So I'm going in with a little bit of a darker color, but it's it's still a cool color. It's the combination of um, um, ultramarine blue. So I'm going to start rolling it out. See how I'm, and I'm washing my brush off. So I'm actually just using paint thinner, and pulling that up. Because I don't really want the paint to be thick here. And there is a dark value, dark, dark crease right here. bit. There's like a it goes all the way around there for some reason. Remember these fabrics, these um, claws are folded in my, generally they're folded so they have folding creases in them too. So that's kind of a thing. Something to consider here. And like I said, I probably won't get all up in here just for time wise. So I'm going in with the mid-tone that I made with the ivory black and ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. It's kind of gray. And I'm going to, oops, I want more. See, I'm going up to that area. But I'm rolling it down, so I want this to stay darker on the edge. So if I wanted to go in there and just do this whole area. See how I'm just being very flat with my brush and I'm just using the still the same pointed round. I can just go all the way out there. But see I'm keeping that edge slightly darker because as something's rolling away from you it tends to keep that darker that darker edge. In this case anyway now as it moves out it does get lighter. See how I'm just being very deliberate with that stroke. It's one single stroke. Let's see. So, I better do it up here too. So this kind of comes up. Now I'm going to go in with just that ultramarine blue. A little, see how I'm going with the darker value over here. And I'm going to go in there and suggest that it's, and I see sometimes I see triangles. I'm going to pull over the ivory black. And right here at this edge. It's rolling down into it. And sometimes you can make that just a little a little bit of a dip in the fabric. I really want it to be dark in here because on the upper part of this the lights hitting from above it would be really dark at the top part of that crease 
but then it would get lighter on the interior part. here so you see I'm blending very lightly sometimes when you see don't see my brush for a second I'm wiping it off I wipe my brush more than I put it in paint thinner okay because sometimes it's okay to have a little bit depends on what color you're working with So it's almost creating its own fold. So I'm gonna go back in on the creases, because remember the creases are generally darker, and then they work their way out to the light. All right, with that, I'm also gonna put a little bit more intense blue closer to this on this side. The light color. Going back in with cobalt and white. And I'm going to suggest that it's, you know, and it does get closer to the edge after here. Um, Or here, a little bit here. So I don't want to make it obvious, but you see how it's rolling? This kind of goes in like that. So sometimes I'll even go in with a little bit more light like at the very edge of this. Um, and then this even lighter here. This is where I am failing a little bit because I don't have a, I'm not Want to dirty up another brush for this but I'm trying to just take this point and give this just a little bit more there we go folks that in a nutshell is how I do fabric um, I hope this has been helpful um, I saw a teaching moment today <laughs> I saw an opportunity to, to, to actually elaborate a little bit on um, making fabric um, and hoping that it would help my student and I know if it helps her it'll help you guys too so I hope you enjoyed this good we got it done in under an hour see that didn't take too long if you have any questions about anything you saw in today's video please don't hesitate to ask um, leave it in the comment section I'll answer it um, if you have uh, any suggestion on something you'd like to see, maybe you have trouble with painting fabric folds or maybe rocks or sky or whatever, let me know that in the comment section as well and I'll get to you. And also know folks that this was actually originally done for one of my, for my Patreon channel. And uh, yeah, so you might wanna hop on to my Patreon channel and see all the full length real time videos that I post there and uh know that the, you know they don't usually make them to youtube so 
check out my Patreon channel and become a member of my YouTube channel. Now, that's a little different than subscribing. Subscribing's free, right? And I'd love for you to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. But the membership, uh, my membership channel on my channel is actually a little bit better, a little bit more, kind of, uh, you get a little bit more, there's more oomph to it. <laughs> you get a little bit more for it. And uh, there's several different tiers that you can choose from. And we're gonna be doing a lot more live streams since I just got my camera in. So. There's going to be some good stuff happening. So get on while you can. Get on while the getting's good. And jump on my membership on my YouTube channel and join my Patreon. Okay, that's it. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you for joining me. And I'll see ya. Bye.